Good morning, everyone. I hope y'all are doing well this week. I've got some more bare root roses that have arrived from a couple of different places. Uh, some from Menagerie Farm and some from Grace Rose Farm. Here I've got French lace. Uh, this right here is red traviata. This one is Francis Maillard. I've got three of those. Uh, Shirley's bouquet right here, which is a pretty good size rose. And then this massive one from Grace Rose Farm is uh, Twilight Zone. And look at this, look at that. That's a big Francis Maillard. I'm excited about planting that one. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, because there's three Francis. So yeah, we've got to get these in the ground today. So it's going to be a busy day in the garden. Um, and now that it's almost the end of April, we're kind of phasing out of bare root season. And I found a really awesome deal at Costco last night. And look what I got. I got 12 summer crush hydrangeas. So we can start filling in those new beds that we created because they do get quite a bit of shade. And I actually canceled some of my heirloom rose, uh, part of my heirloom rose order that um, was going to be, you know, I was gonna be putting some roses back in there, but I really thought to myself, like now that the trees, um, you know, the trees have pretty much leafed out. That spot does get quite a bit of shade and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll come back here. All the tree fronds are falling like crazy right now. So everything is a mess, even though I just blew off the deck like yesterday. It's just that time of year. So well, let me show you the area that I'm talking about. So this spot right back here, I was planning on putting roses here, but honestly, between, you know, all these trees up here <laughs> and the peach tree right here, this, I really don't think that roses will do very well, except I am still going to put the rural England rose right there because I think that one may be able to handle a little bit more shade since it is a rambler. So, um, what I'm going to plan to do is I'm going to get those hydrangeas out here and just kind of mess around, play around um, with the location of them. I may want to put most of them back here, or I may want to, you know, put some here and he over here, or I might want to put some over there. I'm not really sure yet. I'm just going to kind of bring them out here and kind of play around with them for a little bit first. Um, I'm not so sure about how they'll do here. I don't know if they might get too much sun right here because it is going to, you know, it's going to get sun at noon. Um, but it's usually by two or three o'clock, this is shaded out already, um, this little spot right here. So I've got to just kind of experiment a bit and see if I like them here or if I want to put something else here, like maybe some oak leaf hydrangeas or maybe more of the uh, incredible hydrangeas because I really love those. And those can take a little more sun, I think. So, hey buddy. Hi. Good morning, you sweet thing. Good morning. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna be kind of playing around with that today and getting the rest of the bare root roses planted which with those roses, I am planning on filling in this little gap right here. This area actually gets more sun later in the day because of the way the sun comes up and over. And as you can see, there's a bit of a, a, bit of a gap right there <laughs> in the sky. And so this area does get more sun than this side over here back in this area. So I think that will be good to go ahead and fill in this space with those bare root roses that I've got soaking right now. Um, not all of them are gonna go back here. I'm probably one, two, three, four. I could maybe fit four more in here. Um, and if I, I'm not sure if I'm leaving 
that's those are the ones I'm just kind of nursing along. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave those there. I could probably put five if I moved those, which I probably need to. Um, and then so I was thinking, well, maybe I should put some of those uh, summer crush hydrangeas back along here, along the back side. You know, in this space, like start one right here and do like a grouping, a kind of like a swoop in here. Um, but they, you know, summer crush doesn't get very big. It stay, the, you know, the tallest it gets is about three feet. So I don't know if I want, uh oh, what is that? Something is going on back there. Um, anyway, I don't know if I want to have something that short in here or if I want something a little bit taller. Again, I'm just gonna have to get them out here and play around with it and see. So yeah, that's what's going on today. Everything is really starting to wake up. My goodness gracious, there's so many weeds back here. And this bed in here, ooh we I really need to uh, get cleaning up big time with this. Always something to do out here. I was trying to give myself a break because my body was saying no more. Um, and it's been a couple of days, so maybe it's time to, to ramp up again. Um, anyway, so that's what's going on. Hope you guys are doing well. I'll kind of show you where I have everything placed once I get it out here. All right, I pulled all those weeds that were around the peach tree and set these all out. And I actually really like them right here. All 12 of them fit in here very nicely. Um, this is the shadier side, obviously. So I didn't, um, I didn't think it would be good to put a bunch back in here. This has a little bit more sun. Um, maybe some like uh, paniculata hydrangeas might be good back in here uh, when the time comes. But I figured this one will probably be fine here since it's going to be shaded a whole lot by the peach tree. And once we get some that impressionist climbing rose up here, it'll, you know, obviously shade it out as well. So I was thinking, you know, surrounding the peach tree would be good. And then just creating a whole nice little um, bed of hydrangeas right here. I think this is going to be a really nice setup for this. Um, and look at how great the snapdragons are doing. I'm very excited about this little patch. It's going to be so pretty. Uh, but yeah, so I think that's going to be a good spot for those. And next thing on my mind is figuring out what to put back in here. I may do some more incredible hydrangeas back in here because I just love the white blooms. And I'd like to get some hostas as well. Um, I thought about doing that uh, Gilbert H. Wild deal again. They have like a dollar hosta deal right now. But the problem with that is that you don't know what you're getting. And honestly, for this area, since it's, I mean, it's not a massive area. I mean, it's a good size, but it's not, um, I guess because it's closer to the pathway and like, I'm going to be looking at this. I want to make sure that I pick something that I know I really, really want. And so I'm probably just going to go to Pikes later this summer and get um, some varieties of hosta that I really like and will enjoy. And I'll mix those with the hydrangeas. I'm a hosta and a hydrangea girl. I'm sorry if y'all get sick of seeing all those, but I just love, I love how big groups of plants look together. To me, it's more catching to the eye instead of like jumbling up a bunch of different stuff in here. Um, one thing I might do though is maybe back in here is get a nice Japanese maple to plant there. Uh, I'd really like to get a red leaf one so it'll really stand out with the white. So I think like a red leaf maple, Japanese maple surrounded by white hydrangeas with some hostas in here would look really, really beautiful. So that's my thought process so far for this bed and still need to move that sucker. And then we need to, you know, once we get this moved, we'll start working on 
finishing the lines of this bed in here. And most likely I'm gonna need to uh, move all these hostas up to the front um, and then figure out what I'm gonna do back there. And I might end up, well, since we expanded this bed, I might go ahead and keep that magnolia there. It just needs to be straightened up. It's kind of leaning over a bit. So that's what's going on so far. Um, and everything's starting to leaf out, which is great, but not so great uh, when weeds are involved. Oh, and also this pathway here, I am trying to convince my husband to not mulch this. And instead of putting mulch down, we'll you know, we'll pull up all this fabric stuff. I would love to put grass down here. One of you guys, I'm not sure which one of you, one of you suggested putting grass um, here in between the rose garden beds. And I was like, wow, you know what? That would really be so beautiful. And what I would love most about it is I could walk barefoot in my garden, which I would absolutely love to be able to do. Um, it would help me ground more. And I just love being, you know, who doesn't love being barefoot in uh, grass? So I was looking at um, the grass type called zoysia, which is what we have in the front and the backyard. But there's a specific variety that is able to handle shade better and it's called emerald. And it's actually one of the most beautiful zoysia grasses because it has this nice dark emerald green color. And so I am trying to work my magic on my husband and convince him that we need some emerald zoysia grass back in here. I think it would really look gorgeous and it would help uh, make the plants pop. And it would just be so nice to be able to walk back here barefoot and just, you know, enjoy the grass and enjoy all the flowers. And I think I would just really enjoy it a lot more out here if this pathway, these pathways were all grass. So still working on them though. Um, Cause it's not, uh, from what I could see, it's probably going to be about a thousand dollar job to um, cover this whole area. I'm thinking. Um, still haven't gotten the you know exact numbers on that yet, but it's going to probably be about a thousand dollars to do something like that back here. And um, right now, you know, it's just that when you weren't planning to do it in the first place, like a thousand dollar like little add-on is not really little. So um, we'll see if we can make it work. It may have to be something that we do next year though. We'll see. But anyway, oh, and speaking of money, you see that roof up there. The last storm that we had, several shingles had fallen off and um, we're now in the process of getting a new roof. So we also have that kind of um, expense you know, to be concerned with. So the grass may need to wait till next year, but I'm hoping that we can somehow make it work for this year. So that will be so exciting and so neat to just be able to walk through here barefoot and enjoy this beautiful space that we're creating. So, um, but yeah, anyway, that's really it for now, y'all. Uh, once I get those bare roots planted, I will show you where they end up going. And that's about it for today.